everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this gorgeous ginkgo leaf slouch hat. This is the matching hat to the scarf that I shared last week, the ginkgo leaf scarf um, that you can see on the channel as well. It matches. It's the same stitch, same colors and everything, but I've turned it into a slouch hat. And this is a super easy hat to make. We're going to start by making a rectangle with this same stitch pattern as we use for the scarf. Then we're going to seam it to make like a cylinder tube. And then we're going to learn how to cinch the top. And then we're going to add a lovely brim just to kind of frame it in and um, give it a nice fit when you wear it. And then when you wear this as a, a slouch hat, you um, sort of kind of let this fall down. Um, and you can see pictures on the blog of how to style it as well. So let's get started. We're going to jump in on the crochet part. And then we're going to go through each part like I explained before. Our finished hat is about 12 and a half, half inches tall from the bottom rim all the way up. And then our hat has a 20 inch circumference. Now that being said, this hat is very slouchy and um, loose and you can wear it um, you know, nice and slouchy. So there is some stretch to it and it is very forgiving. Our brim kind of helps to give it a nice fit and kind of anchor it on your head. And then this lovely lace sort of like slouches down. So um, if you need to change the circumference though, you'll just work more rows of this lace pattern. And if you want to change the height and make it less slouchy or more slouchy, um, I'm going to tell you the stitch multiples as we work these fans. You can make it uh, your hat a little taller or shorter if you like as well. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to get the exact sizing that you need for you. We're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Streamline, uh, the metal one that uh, recently came out. If you want a uh, to check it out or see what else they have, a link and a coupon code can be found below if you'd like to get one for yourself. Now let's look at this beautiful yarn. I recently did a huge unboxing of this. This is some yarn from Lion Brand that Furls also now uh, carries as well. So I did a big unboxing of all the yarn. And this is called Color Theory. It's from Lion Brand Yarn. Um, they did a partnership with Two of Wands, who's a knitting and crochet designer. And um, it comes in tons of beautiful colors. I picked four that I really liked together. Um, now, I want to say as a side note that, um, like I said, it comes in lots of colors. And the four balls of yarn here is going to be for the scarf and the matching hat. So this is going to be the yarn that you'll need for for the set, okay? Um, each ball of this is 246 yards, and I have four balls of it here. Um, the colors that we're going to use are, this is called Moonbeam. It's kind of like a stone color. This is called Bee Pollen. It's a lovely uh, yellow kind of gold color. This yarn color is called Dijon. It's like a um, kind of like a deep mustard. And then this one here is called Canyon, and it's sort of like a terracotta, like a rosy terracotta looking color. So um, this yarn also can be found at Furls, and I have a coupon code for Furls. Uh, the link in, uh, to the yarn and the hook with the coupon code can be used for any of it um, is found down below. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my yarn and my hook, and we're ready to go. Now before we begin, I just wanted to explain the construction a little bit. We're going to be making a long rectangle that will wrap around your head and then we're going to seam it and cinch it and then later we're going to do just a little brim to finish it off. Okay, so this part we're going to work the long uh, rectangle of the beautiful fan stitches. Okay, so what I like to do when I'm making something with multiple colors like this, I like to lay my colors out and decide what order I would like to have them in and kind of map it out before I begin, okay? So grab your yarn and we're going to begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. So what we're going to do now is our starting chain. Now the starting chain determines the height of your hat. So um, the hat that I'm making is a little bit slouchy. So I'm going to make mine um, a little bit past the crown of the head. Okay. So I uh, the stitch that we're using is a multiple of 10 plus 2. 
So if you need to change it, just know it's a multiple of 10 plus two. And if you're not familiar with multiples, all that means is when you're doing your starting chain, um, you're gonna do groups of 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 and so forth. So you get the height. This will, your starting chain is, chain is gonna determine the height of our hat. So work in groups of 10 until you get the height and then add two chains onto that. So a multiple of 10 plus two. So this was enough height to give me, you know, to, to cover the head, but also give me a little bit more height to give me that uh, little bit of slouch effect I was after. But you can adjust it and change it um, however you want. Just know it's a multiple of 10 plus two. So we're gonna do a starting chain of 42, okay? So let's begin by working our chain. So again, the uh, starting chain is gonna determine the height of your hat. How many rows we're gonna work of this stitch pattern, how uh, long we make our strip is going to determine the circumference of the hat, okay? So let's do our starting chain. Um, to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 40, 41, and 42. So here is our starting chain. And um, I do get this question a lot. If your chain is tight, that happens to people sometimes, just go up a hook size for your starting chain only and then go back to the J for the rest of your project. Um, again, the starting chain, this is gonna be the height of our hat. So you can kind of see it's gonna need to wrap around the head and then add a, a little bit more slouch. If you don't want the slouch, you can play around with the uh, multiples and kind of customize it a little bit. So we're gonna learn three different uh, rows for our stitch pattern. Um, we're gonna begin with row one. So for row one, we're gonna work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count, and I'm just gonna zoom in a teeny bit so you can see. This loop here does not count, so we're gonna go one and two, second chain in, and we're gonna work a single crochet. So insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip four chains, one, two, three, and four, and in the chain after that, we're gonna work nine treble crochets. So if you made the scarf with me recently, you'll, you'll see that this is the same stitch pattern because it's a matching set. Um, but if you want a refresher or to see it with like, this is a little bit longer of a starting chain, obviously um, follow along with me because we're gonna go through this every stitch of the way. Okay, so we're gonna, in that, in that chain, we're gonna work nine treble crochets. So to make a treble crochet, wrap yarn around hook two times, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have four loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So that's one, but we need nine, okay? So that's one, and then we're gonna work a second one. So two treble crochet. three treble crochet, four treble crochet. Let me just, I got my yarn all wrapped up in my finger here. Okay, so that was four. We're gonna do five treble crochet. And six seven, eight, and nine. So what we've just created, we just finish up this last stitch I can show you, is this gorgeous fan, okay? So we're gonna do a couple more of those across. All right, so let's go back down here to our chain. So what we're gonna do now is skip four chains, one, two, three, and four, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. That's gonna kinda tack down our lovely fan here and give it a nice rounded appearance, okay? So once again, skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and in the chain after that, work nine treble crochets. 
So one treble crochet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Just like that, okay? So then we're gonna go back down our chain here and count. Skip four chains, one, two, three, and four. And in the chain after that, work a single crochet. We're just repeating the same sequence all the way across. Then we're gonna skip four chains, one, two, three, four. And in the chain after that, work nine treble crochets once again. So one treble crochet, two treble crochet. Actually, let me pull a little bit more yarn here. There we go. Let's, let me just redo that when it wasn't coming out. Whenever you have a stitch that doesn't look uh, the way you want it, just, just pull it out and redo it. It's much easier to do it then and there than to go back, okay? All right, so we did one. Now we're gonna do two treble crochet, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right, and the fan is done. So go back down here, count one, two, three, four chains, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet once again. We're making good progress. As you can see, we have some beautiful fans happening here. Okay, so Skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and in the chain after that, work your nine treble crochets once again. So one, two, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, I missed that loop, uh, seven, eight, and nine. All right, we have just a few chains left here, so skip four, one, two, three, four, and there's one chain left at the end. Just work a single crochet into that to finish off the row. Okay, so let's look at our handiwork here because I wanted to show you one thing before we move on to row two. Um, you should have, if you did the same starting chain as I did, you should have one, two, three, four fans across, and they look beautiful. This yarn really uh, shows off the stitch work nicely. Okay, so moving on to row two. Row two, what we're gonna do is chain four, one, two, three, four, and turn our work. 
Let me just get that tail out of the way. Then what we're going to do is in the base, remember that single crochet we did at the end of the row? It's in the at the base. If you look at our chains that we just did, right at the base of that, you can see a, a loop. So right into that single crochet from the previous row, work a treble crochet. Just like that to start off the row. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to work a single crochet in the centermost stitch of our fan, okay? So you can count or you can, what I like to do is kind of isolate the fan and use my thumbs. And I grab one on each side, one on each side, one on each side, one on each side, and there it is right there in the middle. And so here's our stitch. And at the top, this little loop here is where we're gonna work our single crochet, right into that stitch. So go right in with your hook, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. So just work a single crochet in the centermost stitch of your fan. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna hop over to the stitch in between our fans. So remember last row, uh, in between our each fan, we did a single crochet. Into that single crochet, you can see it right in the middle of your fans, work two treble crochets, okay? So work one treble crochet into that single crochet and a second treble crochet into that same stitch, just like that. Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then go to the next fan. We're just repeating the sequence now. So find your next fan and just, uh, I, uh, you can count in to the stitch or just a real quick way to do it is to, like I said before, just grab your fan, kind of isolate it, grab a stitch with each thumb, one on each side, one on each side, one on each side, and there you are. There it is right in the middle. Work a single crochet in that centermost stitch of your fan and chain three. One, two, three. All right, then we're gonna go in between the fans once again, that single crochet that's in between the two fans, and we're gonna work two treble crochets both of them in that same stitch, okay? So one treble crochet in that stitch and two treble crochet in that stitch. Just like that. Chain three once again. One, two, three. Hop over to your next fan and we're gonna locate that centermost stitch. Again, I like to just kinda find it that way. Work a single crochet into that centermost stitch of your fan and chain three, one, two, three. Go in between the two fans, find that single crochet and work two treble crochets right into that stitch. So one treble crochet and two treble crochet, just like that. And chain three, one, two, three and then locate the centermost stitch of your fan. So just, that's how I like to do it. Work a single crochet into that centermost stitch of your fan and chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna to go to the end of this fan and we have a single crochet uh, at the end of this row. So work two treble crochets into that single crochet at the end of the row as well to finish up row two. So that was one treble crochet and this was the second treble crochet. So row two is complete. So now we have these beautiful stitches in between our fans and it looks lovely. Okay, moving on to row three. Row three is the last row we're gonna learn because for the rest of our hat, we're just gonna be repeating rows two and three, two and three to get the stitch sequence, okay? So let's do row three and learn how that's done. So for row three, we're gonna chain one, turn our work. Okay, so now we have, remember those two treble crochets that we just did? In the space in between them, we're going to work a single crochet. So right in that space, work a single crochet. And then remember that single crochet we worked in the center of the fan? In that stitch, that single crochet, we're gonna work nine treble crochets. So we're gonna be like stacking our fans one on top of the other, okay? So one treble crochet, two treble crochet, 
three treble crochet, four treble crochet, five treble crochet, six treble crochet, seven, eight, and nine, okay? So before we move on, let me just show you the lovely uh, fans, uh, the effects of it stacking, it looks nice. Okay, so then hop over to, remember those two treble crochets from the previous row? Go right into the space between them, work a single crochet. Hop over to that single crochet in the center of the fan from the previous row and work nine treble crochets. So one treble crochet, two treble crochet, three treble crochet, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We are making some great progress. All right, hop to uh, those two treble crochets, work a single crochet in the space between them. Hop over to the single crochet from the previous row, work your nine treble crochets right into that stitch, all in the same stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, work a single crochet in between those two treble crochets right in that space. Easy to find. And then find that single crochet in the center of the fan and we'll work nine treble crochets into that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops, let's redo eight. <laughs> eight kind of went crazy. All right, eight, nine. Okay, so to finish off the row, we have two treble crochets at the end here. Right in that space, work a single crochet, and row three is complete. So let's move our hook for just a minute. And we're gonna kinda lay out what we've done here. We might have to straighten it out a little bit. But we have our stitch sequence now. So this uh, is actually going to look like this when you wear it. So it'll be, this is the height of your hat, okay? So we're gonna be repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until you can snugly and comfortably wrap this rectangle, this is gonna become a rectangle, around your head. So again, this is the height, and then we'll be working the circumference, okay? So what you're gonna do is keep repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until you can wrap this around your head comfortably 
you don't want it to be tight, but you don't want it to be loose too and falling off, okay? So just kind of keep repeating the rows until you get to the size that you want. Now when we come back, I'm gonna give you some exact measurements. You can go by that too if you prefer. So the next thing we're gonna do after we repeat our rows two and three is we're gonna seam up our hat and then we're gonna cinch the top of our hat and then we're gonna create just a very simple little brim just to make it look a little bit more finished looking, okay? So keep repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until this can uh, snugly and comfortably wrap around your head. You don't want it to be too tight either because these stitches will start to pull and buckle, okay? So keep working your rows and we'll rejoin in just a minute. Just working the last row of our rectangle here, which we're soon gonna be turning into a hat. Okay, so um, I wanted to spin this around though to show you what I've done here. So what we did for our colors is I did four rows of each color. So you remember we did row two with these kind of deep treble crochet Vs and row three was the fans, the large beautiful fans. So I worked rows two, three, two, three for each color. So four rows of each color. Now, as a side note, when I got up to the top here, I did the four rows of this last color when I was about to finish, and then I worked row two one more time because what we're gonna do now is seam this rectangle together, seam the ends, and I felt like working row two one more time gave it that edge that we need to seam it, okay? So um, if we would have just left it as the the fans, the scallop top, it would have been a little harder to seam it, okay? So what we wanna do now, because we're gonna seam it together and cinch the top and do all those fun things that turn it into a hat, is we're gonna go back to this last stitch we just worked, now that I've shown you everything. Now you can make your colors change um, differently than I did, but I wanted to, them to change pretty frequently because a hat is a little smaller. Now if you remember our scarf, um, the matching scarf has a little bit thicker um, color changes. I color, I changed colors less often. Um, I did, I think, 10 rows of each color, but it, it created chunkier, wider colors. I wanted them to be less, uh, excuse me, more frequent changes in the hat because it's a small area wrap around your head. So you can kind of see the, the display while you're wearing the hat, okay? But that was my reasoning. Please feel free to do any combination you like. It's your hat for sure. All right, so what we're gonna do is fasten off. So wrap the yarn around your hook, pull it all the way through, and then you can cut. I've already cut, but I left a very long tail. See this nice long tail? We're gonna use that to seam our hat. You don't even have to have a separate piece of yarn. So what we wanna do now, we're not gonna worry about all these tails at the top right now, but what we wanna do is take the outside. The outside of it, you can kind of see the scallops. Now if we line it up with this, this is the back. See how the backs of the fans look a little bit different than the fronts? This was uh, the right side or the public side, the side that will face out when you're wearing the hat. The fans look, now they're upside down, but the fans look different. Those were the sides that faced you while you worked each fan, okay? So that's gonna be the outside. So we wanna seam our hat inside out. So we wanna put this on the inside. And now the inside of our hat is facing out, if that makes sense. Okay, so what we wanna do now is take our two edges and it'll be easy to line them up because we have four fans here. One, two, three, four, and four fans here. We're gonna just line them up the best we can. So sandwich them together. And you may find your starting chain where you began your rectangle is a little stretchier and kind of looser looking than where you ended. That's fine, that's normal, no big deal. When we seam it, it'll all kind of come together. So I'm gonna take my long tail. And just as a side note, this is about, I would say about 48 inches or so, give or take. That's plenty of yarn to seam this up. So what we want to do is just thread that tail, it's already attached to our work, and seam it together. So I have my fan here, the center of it, you can see where my single crochet was, and the fan center here. Try to line those fans up the best you can and just kind of hold them together as you work. And you want those fans to be lined up really carefully. Uh, you want to take your time on this part because our hat will be a cylinder very soon. So you want that smooth, see how all these fans are lined up so neatly and perfectly? You want that to continue even at your seam, okay? So just make sure you hold your fans together 
while you seam, just hold it nice and snug, and that way your fans will look uh, seamless and they'll flow together, okay? So we're going to use the whip stitch. All that is is a fairly invisible spiral through your work. And because we're using the tail, it's automatically a matching piece of yarn, okay? So we're just going to go through both layers. Make sure to pick up two loops on each layer if you can. And we're just going to go through and go across the whole thing, making sure to keep your two edges nice and neat. Keep everything lined up and just take your time. And I would, for one especially that's lacy like this, um, like our piece that we're doing, I would make sure that every so often after a few stitches that you open it back up and just look at what you're getting. Okay, make sure that things are lined up, things look neat. And if not, you can pull it out at this time. It's much easier to do it now. Okay, so we're gonna seam this all the way across and when we rejoin, we're gonna fasten off turn it right side out. We're going to work on a, a cinch to cinch the top of our hat shut. Okay, so I've worked the seam all the way across. And then what we want to do is when we get to the end, just put one more little stitch in there. And if you have a tail, you can just tie it right onto a nearby tail. That's fine. Um, this one's kind of getting in the way there. So I have a tail here. If not, just make a little knot. Totally fine. And then what you want to do is just turn it right side out. Check your handiwork, make sure it looks the way you want it to look. And then we can cinch. So if you have a little bit more of your tail, you can feel free to go ahead and use that. I'm gonna leave these tails alone for just a minute while we cinch because sometimes we can trim them, sometimes we want to weave them in. I'm gonna weave, I'm gonna cinch it and then kind of give you both options, okay? So what we're gonna kind of do now as we go across the top is do a running stitch. Now a running stitch is just up and down, up and down, just really standard kind of stitch. And you know, I got about, I would say a half inch in between. We're just doing really casual. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's gonna be cinched close and you're not gonna see a lot of this, okay? Now again, we're gonna take care of these tails at the end here. But for now, just do this really quick little running stitch across the top with our tail. Just catch some of those. Now because this is lacy and has all these lovely fans, um, there's a lot of space in between everything. So just do the best you can. It, it will cinch up really nicely and look lovely. Um, and I loved how we have, let's get those tails out of the way. I love how we had enough of our tail to just kind of keep on going with this. Okay, so I'm just continuing across. This is gonna be the top of our hat. Kind of scooting the tails out of the way. If you wanna weave them in first, you know, it might make your life a little easier. But I kind of wanted to show you when we're done, how you can either trim or weave, it's up to you. It will be in the top inside of the hat, so it will be pretty hidden. So that's why, you know, if you wanna make the choice, normally I weave in ends all the time, but you know, I'll give you both options here if you wanna just snip them off real quick. It won't show. Okay, we're coming up to the end here with our, our cinch seam, if you will, and just make sure you're getting both layers of your sandwich. And we're coming right up to the edge. All right, so then what we wanna do is just put that last one in there. And don't fasten off yet. Leave it kind of active right now because we need to pull this tight. Okay, so get all these tails out of the way. Okay, so let me just zoom out so you can see a little bit better. So now what we're gonna do, we can just grab our tail, and then what you wanna do is just hold your hat down here and just give it a tug. Just, okay, just nice and easy. Be very careful that the yarn doesn't break. You're kind of putting a little bit of uh, strain on it right now. Just go nice and slow and make sure you got a nice cinch at the top, okay? Okay, so once you pull it in snug, then what you can do is just kind of take your needle and go 
we're going to tie it off with a good strong knot. So what I did was I went in, pulled it almost all the way through, but then took my needle back into that loop and that creates a knot, okay? Now, like I said, we can weave in some ends or snip them. So let me show you both. Here's a yellow, the bee pollen color that we used. So I'm just gonna thread that and when you weave it in, I'm gonna put my hand back here so that I don't uh, weave it into a different area and sew it together. But we're just gonna kind of go, make sure you stay in those back loops because the you don't want the outside of the hat to show. You're just gonna go in a couple stitches, come back in the other direction with your needle, and then you can just give it a snip. Now on the other hand, if you want to just snip these tails, um, these are all going to be up in the top of the hat. You won't really see them, so you can do that as well. So just decide how you want to approach it. And then we're gonna turn the hat right side out and inspect what we've done. Okay, so what you'll wanna do now is turn it right side out. You can kind of put your hand up in the hat, just kind of shape it up a little bit. It looks great. Just get it shaped up a little. All right, so here is the basic hat. Now, another optional thing you can do is this kind of rolls naturally. You can have like a, just a simple little uh, rolled brim for that. You just kind of wear it like that. Or we can add a nice edge to it. So I do have some yarn here. We're just gonna add a really simple little single crochet edge to our hat, okay? So what we wanna do is go in to, here is our seam. We're gonna kind of start there. So go in, now if you look at the side, see we're looking at the sides of this now. If you look at the side, you're gonna have this sideways V, which is a large opening, and then you're gonna have a stitch next to your fan, and then you're gonna have a large V. We're gonna be working single crochets in those spaces. Now it's sideways, so they're not gonna be traditional looking stitches, but I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So what you wanna do is there's a space here where we begin and a stitch, okay? See, there's gonna be a large sideways V space and a little stitch and a large sideways V stitch and so forth, okay? So go ahead and right where your seam is, just tie a new color in. Just tie it right on there. Whoops, I dropped my, my tail here. Let's try that again. <laughs> okay, just like that. And then this is just gonna give us a nice little edge so it looks a little bit more finished, okay? Go back into that seam stitch, and actually let me zoom way, way in so you can see what I'm actually doing here. Go back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and we're gonna chain one, okay? We're gonna work single crochets all around this. Okay, now we're at that side V opening. So go right in, work a single crochet. Go right in, work a single crochet, single crochet. So three single crochets in that space, and then one single crochet into that little stitch at the side of the fan. Now we're at a sideways V, work three singles in there. One, two, three, and then work a single crochet into that stitch next to your fan, okay? So we're just gonna be working three single crochets in each one of these larger spaces on the side. When you have your hat in front of you, um, It'll make sense too. And then in the smaller, that side of that stitch, work one single crochet. Work three single crochets in that larger opening that you come to next. So one, two, three. And then work a, a single crochet in that one little side stitch. Now we're at a, the sideways B here of the treble crochets. So work three single crochets in that, right into the space. We're just getting a nice little edge here, okay? Work a single crochet in that little stitch. Work three into that next larger space that you come to. Work a single crochet into that next smaller opening. Work three single crochets into the large opening. 
two, three, work a single crochet into the smaller space, work three single crochets, two, three into the larger space, work a single crochet into the smaller space, our spaces go large, small, large, small, and then work three single crochets into the larger space that follows that. Now you'll be at your smaller space, work a single crochet into that one. You're in a larger space, work three single crochets, one, two, three, into the next one. You're at a smaller space now, work a single crochet, we're at a larger space again, work three single crochet, one, two, three, work a single crochet into the smaller space, work three single crochet into the larger space. So we'll at some point get more repetitive. <laughs> work a single crochet into the smaller space on the side, work three single crochet into the larger space on the side, one, two, and three. Um, I forgot to mention this before, but this um, canyon color that I chose, you can pick any color for your edging. I just really love this color. I thought it'd be a nice way to kind of tie it all in. But any of these four colors would look great. Work a uh, single crochet into the smaller space. Work three single crochet into the larger space. Three, uh, excuse me, one single crochet into the smaller space. Three single crochet, one, two three into the larger space. And now we're back at the beginning. So insert the hook into that first stitch that you made, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay, we've kind of set up our base for our little brim here. Um, it will get a little bit um, straighter as we work, okay? So what we wanna do once again is chain one, and then we're gonna work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So just go all the way around, and work a single crochet in each stitch. These are actual stitches, so they'll look much easier than working in side spaces and things, although that wasn't too bad. Some Sometimes it can get a little um, hard to see when you work in side spaces, but that wasn't too bad. So we're just working a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So this is our round two of our brim, okay? You can see it's getting a little bit more substantial looking. We're gonna get a little bit of a brim there just to give it a nice finished look and kind of anchor in uh, some of this edge. Okay, so just go all the way around working a single crochet in each stitch. Okay, just coming up to the end of round two for our little brim. Just working that last single crochet. Again, we just worked a single crochet in every stitch around. We're going to join with a slip stitch to close the round like we did before. And round two is complete. So for the rest of your hat, all you'll want to do, and it looks very nice, I got to say, as a side note, for the rest of your hat, what you'll want to do, the brim, is just keep repeating uh, round two like we just did. You can back up the video if you need to, repeat that over and over and over again until it's as wide as you would like it to be. Um, this one is pretty thin. It gives a nice little edge if you just want a little accent. If you want to make it more substantial looking, just keep working round two. Now, I wanted to point out, this is just a sort of a pet peeve of mine. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't bother you, but Sometimes when we make stitches with a darker yarn or over something lighter, like here, you can see like little pops of white. If that's bothering you, what you can do is uh, sort of slide the stitches together so it kind of fills in those um, white spots. Um, I don't know. It bothers me. It may not bother you or it may not be as obvious on yours. It just depends on like what colors you chose. But I like to kind of smush those uh, stitches together so I'm, I'm seeing less pops of white. Um, so if you want to do that as well, you can't see them as much on the darker colors. It kind of blends more. But if you're seeing like dots of white, see how that now it looks a little bit neater? Um, you can kind of push your stitches together and they'll stay put pretty good. Um, but if that's bothering you, just as a side note, you might wanna like um, push them together a little bit. Now I can see some little yellow pop here, but it's just uh, giving it just a little bit of a neater look, okay? So anyway, just keep repeating round two until your brim is as wide as you would like it to be. When we rejoin, we're gonna finish up our hat and I'll share with you how wide I made mine and how many rounds I worked, etc. Okay, we're just working the last stitch of our little brim here, that last single crochet. And now I'm just gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. And then the only thing we need to do is cut our yarn. We have some uh, more tails here to weave in. 
fasten that off, pull it through, and I have two tails, one where we begin our edge and one where we um, finished right now. So just grab your tapestry needle and thread it and then we're just going to go in the inside and just stay in those inside loops so that um, everything is nice and concealed. And we're just going to weave that last uh, end in, or last two ends rather. And I'm just going to grab my scissors and give it a little snip. And one more tail. And I lost my needle. There it is. One more tail. And I'm just going to go right back in here. I'm on the inside edge of the hat still. Just go in those back loops. And give it a little snip. Now let's look at our hat on the outside. Okay, so we've done the cinch at the top and our little brim at the bottom. It looks fabulous. It's ready to wear. And when you wear it, you can go on the blog and look for some ideas on how to style it. But when you wear it, some of it is going to like slouch back here. Um, it looks really cute. So that is how you crochet the Ginkgo Leaf Slouch Hat. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.